This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, this is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Basically wrestling central these days, it seems. Uh, between all the promotions, all the people on TV that I've shared a beer with uh, on Monday nights. And uh, <laughs> so much going on. And uh, we are going to be talking with another friend in the... Uh, local area here in a moment but first please go check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and indywrestling.us plenty of wrestling podcasts and also you can check out a lot of the faces you see here on this show in action on indywrestling.us uh, VOD network YouTube Facebook a lot of action out, out there so you guys can go check that out and of course please drop us a line at good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com or 412-206-WMS0 if you have any questions for uh, anybody coming up on the show that we've announced on our, on our Wrestling Mayhem Show or Indie Wrestling Facebook pages, or if you have a recommendation on somebody we should definitely talk to, of course we get a lot of people in the Pittsburgh area, uh, but we do like to find other people all over the place, um, and and we can't watch all the indie wrestling. It's impossible. I can't even watch everything for nine ninety nine on the WWE Network. How do you expect me to do that? I'm not in Seattle, Washington. Help me out, Tina. Um, but uh, let us know anybody we need to be talking to and uh, so we can uh, get out there and, and check out all the indie wrestling as much as possible and let you guys know more about it too. So this week we have with us uh, somebody who I know mostly from Fight Society, but of course he has popped up in the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, Black Diamond Wrestling, I'm sure a few other places too. And then what we say, a year and a half in the business so uh, far? Almost two years. Next almost month. two years in the business. AJ Alexander has joined us. I, I, I don't re- You have a couple monikers. I wasn't sure which one to use tonight. Uh well, primarily I work face, and I use the Master of the Neckbreaker gimmick there. Master of the Neckbreaker. Yeah, uh, I'm starting to use the Chosen Samoan moniker. Oh, for... I haven't heard that one yet. You haven't heard the Chosen Samoan? No. Samone. That's actually what I started out as. Okay. And uh, I'm starting to use that more as a heel mm-hmm. type thing because of the fact that uh, it seems like you're chosen and you're that top guy and whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's just easier to work out that way. Cool. So uh, we like to do a little bit of an icebreaker here on the show. Okay. Uh, so tell me, what is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Oh, geez. Um, uh, do I actually have to remember it? Or <laughs> wait, wait, what is? What do you remember? Was it? What okay. was your first so, like thing you remember about wrestling that comes to mind? So I was. Uh, I was told uh, it was either eight or nine days after I was born on a. Uh, yeah. Really? Yes. March 28th or 29th. I think it was the 28th. 1998 was uh, WrestleMania 14. And uh, I was born March 20th. Oh, that is the Mike Tyson Stone Cold. Yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, Austin Michaels headlined. Wow. And uh, I was born March 20th, 1998. I'm only 21. And... Uh, I specifically remember from that mania was uh, Kane versus Undertaker for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it was just such a big deal. And my mom told me that she threw like a big party and everything. And I sat up and watched it until it was over. And then I cried when it went off. <laughs> and so I went back to sleep. <laughs> what? Whatever. I don't know. But uh, is this, wait, wait, wait. Did, did, did this just lay into all the Samoan stereotypes that you guys are basically like wrestling like from birth <laughs> or uh, into it? Basically. Basically, <laughs> yes. Yes, uh, we we study for forever. <laughs> it's uh, it's quite ridiculous, honestly. That's amazing. Uh, so so you basically literally grew up with it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um. So so was it was it a family thing or you know? Uh, no. My mom's brothers were into it real heavy. Mm-hmm. So whenever I was growing up, between like ages one and five, mm-hmm. any chance they got, they always picked me up and hit me with a jackknife power bomb <laughs> or the razor's edge, or just because I was the little guy and they could practice their moves and mm-hmm. whatever. 
And uh, just them doing that and then just sitting down and watching it with them, it was always a very good interest of mine. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't know. I just never thought I would be doing it. So how did you kind of go grow into like you know decide to like hey maybe I can't get it in the ring then? Uh, well, it wasn't until twenty the summer of twenty sixteen. I uh, I just graduated from high school and uh, I was going to college, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I haven't been to indie wrestling events for. 10 12 years 10 to 12 years and uh black diamond just happened to be running in benwood so i went over and watched that and i kind of just got re-hooked back into it and i was talking to everyone there to figure out how i can get started in it and uh the guy who i eventually was talking to was uh michael mcgowan and he said, yeah, next time we run an event at the uh, Fireman's Club in Benwood, you and your cousin can just come on down and we'll start training you. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you want me <laughs> to go on the story go about for how it. I started? Go All for right. it. So uh, we started doing it about – Black Diamond was only running at the Fireman's Club in Benwood like once every three months. Mm-hmm. So I was only training once every three months. Really? Oh, it was just yeah. like before the shows, they didn't have a, yes. a facility? Okay. Mm -hmm. they, that was before they had the Diamond Plex. Mm -hmm. So uh, probably... Kind of hard to progress with that. Yeah. So it was a probably... I probably got nine, nine months in, mm -hmm. which was three training sessions. And I just realized that it, it's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to do anything with this. Yeah. I was in college, so trying to find gear and all this other stuff was kind of stressful, even though I wasn't going to be working for 10 years at that point. Mm -hmm. um, we got to the point, me and my cousin, where we were like, we need to find somewhere else to train that has a building that we could really sink our teeth into and really get this rolling. So we, um, we, went up, we just looked at the internet forever and ever. We eventually came across PWX, and we're like, "Oh, Kurt Angle trained here. Like, it, it can't be bad. <laughs> Might mm -hmm. as well go up." <laughs> so I was uh, emailing Jim Miller, and we were talking and talking, and eventually he was like, "Yeah, just come up Sunday and have the two hundred dollar tryout fee." Da 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 da. And I was like, "Oh, cool, whatever. We'll we'll get this started again." So I drive all the way up there, and what I had at the time was like a little rink dink beater car just to get from point a to point b and we uh me and my cousin got up there and we uh we were looking around trying to find the building and stuff and i emailed jim i was like hey uh where's the building he's like oh just find a red door and go in it so we're still driving. We're just driving around in a circle at this point just around the block wait you're rolling around the block and he just says hey look for the red door yes Yes, I still have the emails if you want to look at it afterwards. <laughs> a, no, no, this seems right. No, this but, seems right. But he was like, yeah, just find the red door and go in. I said, uh, okay. So eventually I just pulled into the, where the fans park now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I just sat there on my phone like, we're never going to find this place. Like, we're, we're just not going to find it. <laughs> and uh, I saw Scarlet who uh, wrestles for Fight Society, too. I saw her get out of her car and walk in a red door. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that must be the door. Let me <laughs> let me go ahead and go in. It's a clue. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, let me just walk up in there. And Jim was like, all right, when you get there, talk to Quinn. He'll guide you through everything. Mm -hmm. So I walked down, and at this point, I already know the, like, the locker room etiquette, shaking hands and all this other stuff. And I I walk up in there, and I see uh, Timothy Titan first. He was the first guy I saw. Mm -hmm. I walk up, shake his hand. I was like, are you Quinn? He's like, no, I'm Tim. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> That's not who I'm looking for. So then uh, Thomas Mathis was also there. I walked up, shook his hand. Hey, are you Quinn? No, I'm Thomas. <laughs> but nobody's directing you to where no, Quinn Nobody's may be. telling me who Quinn is or where he's at. <laughs> And I walk up to uh, Scarlett and shake her hand, and I'm like, uh, 
dumb question, but are you Quinn? She's like, no. And Tim, Tim eventually yells, all right, Quinn's going to be the big tall guy that walks in there with a real deep voice. I'm like, all right, let me look for him. And uh, at the time, I haven't heard from him since my first day there. But at the time, there was a smaller guy. His name was Michael or Austin. One of the two. I'm not sure which one. And uh, he was a little guy. He was probably like 5'3", mm-hmm. probably 150 pounds total. He was a little guy. And uh, I... Like Zeke size or smaller than Zeke? About as tall as Zeke, smaller muscle tone. We're talking about uh, Zeke Mercer, who's who's been on this show before. Yes, Zeke Mercer. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh so he comes in and i shook his hand asked him if he was quinn and he was like no and then quinn eventually walked in and i was like oh please be quinn <laughs> so i walked up and shook his hand and i was like are you quinn yeah i'm quinn <laughs> i don't even remember what he said <laughs> he just said yeah i'm quinn and i'm like oh okay jim told me to find you and give you the money he's like all right cool and that was that was our conversation when we first met. <laughs> oh, geez. I mean, after that, it was I trained for from May of 2017 to August of 2017, and mm-hmm. I was already on shows. Okay, I worked my first match uh, three months after I was there. Wow. So. Um, I I feel like that is the place to get trained if you want to start up because it's it's quick and fast to the right people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you, you, you got the hang of it. They're not just throwing everybody in the ring, but you had a little bit to begin with, got to get the ball rolling with some proper regular training right. and, and was ring ready a lot quicker because of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um well, when I was at Black Diamond, uh, the three training dates I had, I trained with three different people. Yeah. I trained uh, – Michael McGowan was the first one. And then the second one, I trained with uh, System Elite, uh, Ty Cross, and Edric Everhart. And then the third one, I trained with Beastman. hmm And uh, I feel like just training with all three of them, I learned something different from all three of them. But – I realized without one set trainer, like we weren't going to get anywhere. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that, and then the once every three months kind of, uh, pushed me to PWX, mm-hmm. which is now fight society. And, uh, when I got there, I was, I saw that like, uh, ah, no, we won't get into it. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's a story for the next time. <laughs> that's a story for the that's that, that's time. one for the uh, the off air maybe. Um, so you get in there, you're training, you're working PWX, uh, you're working, you know, and of course uh, you, you you go through kind of a a this interesting brand change there with yes. Fight Society, and obviously there's as we're recording this uh, Fight Society's moving the Friday nights, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, buzz around that and what's going to be happening with that as well. Um, what, what, what you know. Did you know anything of PWX going into into it and the lineage uh, attached to that? Of course, you know something's been around over tw- uh, well over twenty years at this point. Um, the only thing I knew about PWX going in there, because I wasn't really familiar with the indie scene, mm-hmm. uh, other than Black Diamond, uh, it was WWE, and that was it. Right, like that's all I knew existed. It wasn't until I started wrestling I realized, hey, there's more wrestling out there. There's wrestling in Japan. Because in my head, I always thought WWE goes to Japan, they go to Europe, they do everything. There's no point in wrestling anywhere else. Mm-hmm. But uh, the more I realized and started focusing on wrestling as a craft and an art, rather than uh, being entertained, mm-hmm. that's when I really started to... Uh, find other promotions outside of WWE. Excellent. So, so how was that brand change for you um, um, that happened about a year and a half ago with them? Actually, I missed the very first Fight Society okay. event. Uh, I was out with injury. Okay. 
uh, I wrestled Thomas Mathis. And uh, I would never suggest looking that match up. It was <laughs> kind of horrible on both of our points because we were just two little uh, new guys in the business mm -hmm. who wanted to go out there and perform and whatever. It was a horrible match. It was a horrible match from me. Mm -hmm. I think he would say the same from him compared to what we did at Black Diamond in June. Mm -hmm. I would say that we really came a long way in a year and a half. Um, but uh, during that match, he hit me with a leg drop, and it shifted two vertebrae in the back of my Oof. neck. So I was out for five months being five, six matches into my career. Wow. I was out for five months from October to February. I was out rehabbing and getting everything put back into place. So I actually missed the very first Fight Society show. Mm -hmm. that, that's got to be tough. You know, that, that's got to be disheartening getting that so early in your career, uh, something on that level. Now, you, I mean, uh, when you get a neck injury, it, it kind of stays with you no matter what, right? Oh, yeah. Um, I know I've always had problems with my shoulders from high school football and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so during the whole rehabbing process, uh, I was also trying to – make my shoulders stronger and my um what is he not chiropractor physical therapist mm -hmm. he told me that i currently don't have any muscle ligaments in my right shoulder and my left shoulder is very limited this is all just from football all from football yes wow uh, it was more of like whenever I'd wrap up and tackle, another mm -hmm. kid would come and tackle with me and hit my shoulder with his helmet. Yeah. And just a whole bunch of impact. And I played running back and we were a smash mouth football team and it was mm -hmm. ridiculous. Um, it puts a lot of miles on you just through high school. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Tons of miles. Um, football really drained me in high school. I know by my senior year, uh, my shoulders were awful. My neck was awful. Mm -hmm. uh, I had bad knees. I didn't want to play anymore. I was so burnt out. I had uh, scholarship offers from three or four D1 colleges. I just turned them all down. I didn't feel like playing anymore. Wow. Um, and then after tons and tons of rehab, I realized I wanted to do something because uh, – I'm a strong believer in God and I feel like he's given me this athletic ability to put me on a pedestal or a platform to really preach his word. And I felt like I needed to do something with that. And, uh, I guess wrestling wasn't the best choice <laughs> because of all the high impact stuff, but it was a choice I made. It was a dream I've always had. Mm. Uh, it was just a passion that I followed through with. And uh, I can happily say that through the past two years in the business, I have brought 21 people to see the light of Christ. So I feel like that's a pretty good accomplishment. It's nothing I'm going to tip my hat to. Mm -hmm. It's nothing I'm going to stop with. But it's a good start. That's awesome. I, I didn't even know that was happening. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of things like uh, at intermission, I'll mm -hmm. go out and talk to people and see if they're dealing with anything, mm -hmm. like any uh, nagging injuries or uh, just cancer, or whatever it is, and I'll sit down and pray with them for five, ten minutes. So, so you're using you're using wrestling as an opportunity for for a little bit of fellowship. Uh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. to an extent. Um, I know we're going to get into it later, but that's why meeting Rev was. I was going to say because it's so so. I mean, obviously, I don't see you know it's not in your character you know that I see in the ring you know that the, which is mostly what I know you from. We haven't had a lot of conversations, right? Right. Um, but uh, but then saw you you know teaming up with Rev in the Jesus Club thing. I'm just like, oh that. Okay, that that seems like a cool thing, but I don't know where that came from, but that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah, uh 
I actually didn't meet Rev until Dropkick Diabetes 4, mm -hmm. which was just only last year. It was the first time I ever met him because when I came into PWX, he was already there and gone. But uh, I remember there we were in a Royal Rumble type match together. And I was coming out a little bit later than he was. And he was like, hey, if I'm still in there, I really mm -hmm. want to do a spot with you because of your uh, fellowship of Christ and me being a reverend. I want to do something with you. Mm -hmm. So we tried that. He was ended, he ended up being eliminated before I got in there. But uh, after that, we talked and talked and talked. And I was like, hey, we need to start wrestling some places together so we can go against each other and really use that platform against each other, face, 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 heel, whatever, mm -hmm. just to really pound in my head, well, in the fans' heads that uh, even though we're followers of Christ, it's not, I was actually told when I first started training that being a follower of Christ, a follower of Christ I was automatically a heel because people just didn't want to he hear it. Yeah, yeah. We, well, I guess classically we have like the Jake Roberts, you know, thing. You mm -hmm. know, like big people are used to that. Like, I don't want to be told what to do. Stone Cold's going to tell you what to, you know, to give you the finger and move on, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, it's just. But that doesn't mean that there's. Sorry, it doesn't mean there's not room for changing that into something new. Right. Right. You know? Right. And I feel like that's something me and Rev are trying to do. Mm -hmm. We're trying to expose the light of Christ with what we do in the ring and outside of the ring, it if that makes it, sense. It starts a conversation. Yes. Like, even if, you know, well, you know, I, obviously we've seen Rev do this, uh, Rev Ron Hunt do this for uh, several years now as the Rev, you right. know, persona and everything. And and I know RWA, we talked about a little bit, uh, we've kind of seen him on both sides of the fence too, right? Um, right. You know, be, being being the one that's telling somebody what to do and, and and being kind of put you know uh, putting people off for that, but then it comes around now people are kind of behind them. So so it's kind of cool to see that. Right, I think people are starting to get behind him mm -hmm. everywhere he goes, even if he's playing the bad guy or yeah. the antagonist. Yeah. Uh, I realize people are everywhere are really starting to get behind him, and I think that's because of his in ring work. Mm -hmm. I think he's a good wrestler, top to bottom. He can go in there with anyone. Uh, he's starting to do a whole bunch of things with uh, ROH, which I'm very happy with him about. Uh, it's just, I did realize this past uh, Sunday when we teamed up that we have a lot of chemistry together. Absolutely. Right. It, like We got to the back, and he was like, what do you think about it? I was like, I, I feel like we can print money with this team. Mm -hmm. He's like, good, because I feel the same exact way. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people were like uh, shocked, kind of, because me and Rev have never shared a ring anywhere at all. We've never been in the same ring together, ever. That was the first time ever. And uh, we, I think we really opened up some eyes in the area. And I think we're going to start getting booked a lot more places with that tag team. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. It, it, it was something I was definitely looking forward to this past Sunday. And uh, if you guys want to see a little bit of that, um, there are gifs and or gifs. I had this argument today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 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 there is a, a clip of the match, I believe, on the the facebook and the youtube which so i'm guys, not in which i'm not in which i'm not in which you're not in oh i'm sorry i i had a center <laughs> on the purple nurple so oh geez that was, <laughs> that was funny that was good i i learned that's that's where i learned i talk about this on some of the other shows this week that's where i learned that apparently the purple nurple is is an illegal maneuver because the referee actually counted for it so i wasn't aware <laughs> of that so but, you know, not the whole deal was in, but I wasn't I wasn't sure that that was illegal either. So it but, kinda caught me off. But guard. to be fair, there are a lot of gifts of you I, I think I pulled at least three gifts of you guys like doing tag team. Oh yeah. I mean oh, that, yeah. that I, I thought those were really smooth for, for being, you know, now knowing how new of a team because I'm like, maybe they tried this somewhere else and I haven't seen it or something, right? So um um there there are some questions in the chat room. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna answer Beast Man first. Okay, okay, okay. I was gonna figure out a place to put that in there. Ask AJ who his dad's favorite wrestler is. So let me tell you the story behind that one, okay? Okay, all right. 
You said he had no funny stories. <laughs> I didn't until this one just popped up. Um, so uh, I won my very first ever championship in wrestling, period. It was a tag title of QCW. Okay. Uh, uh, QCW is? Quaker City Wrestling in Salem, Ohio. Okay. And um, I won my first title in Quaker City Wrestling. And we, I put a picture on Facebook, whatever, like new title, this, this, and that. And I, I got a couple likes. I probably got like 40 likes, but that's, trust me, it's nothing to brag about. Anyways, um, so probably a week later, the following Sunday, uh, Beastman wins the Be- uh, Black Diamond heavyweight title. My dad puts a heart on the post <laughs> and says, congratulations, buddy. And I was sitting there looking at like, Dad, I, I want a title too. Can I get some love? But it, it was always a funny story. Uh, Beast Band always brings it up anytime we, uh, anytime I, we're on the same show. Uh, by the way, referee George is in the chat room and says, "Damn right, it's illegal." Oh, <laughs> talking in, in reference to the purple nurple. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, if you ever bring George in for a uh, podcast, mm-hmm. ask him about mine and Dak Draper's match. Okay, just. Just well, have to. He's it. he's hung out here for uh, the video game streams we've been doing with Brohemoth. Uh, oh yeah, lately, ask so. him on one of them. Streams. But we didn't really interview. They just kind of yelled German at each other. It was very strange. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know what this game they were playing was, but uh, maybe Bro can tell me because he just popped in the chat room. But uh, <laughs> it's it's the German game, Bro. If you just uh, if you didn't catch that on the delay. Um, <laughs> So you guys are tagging. Wow, that, that that's that's awesome. It's having, a, and of course, uh, Rev is in the chat room. Uh, of course, because <laughs> whenever whenever you're talking about the Rev, the Rev will appear magically on the internet uh, to see what's up. Oh, so. <laughs> Rev's always poking his head in everywhere. Mm. He's a funny guy. I like Rev. Awesome. So so it sounds like you're you're kind of uh, on that verge of kind of finding your your spot, like kind of your 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 mode for you in wrestling. Um, I've worked a a good couple of names, mm-hmm. including uh Larusa Beastman. Uh, I don't want anyone to think that if I don't name them, that they weren't good, <laughs> including but not limited to right. <laughs> uh, Dak Draper, who just got signed to ROH, and mm-hmm. uh, Joe Keys, who is in the Future of Honor Dojo. Yes. Uh. A lot of ROH Dojo guys coming through Fight Society these days. Yes, and I feel like that's been a great storyline. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm happy to be a part of it and representing the Fight Society Institute. But uh, wrestling with them guys, they told me that uh, my in-ring ability is there. Mm-hmm. It's finding myself outside of the ring. Mm-hmm. Promos, characters, gear, just yeah. finding myself outside of the ring. So that's what I've uh, really been focused on moving forward. It's awesome, uh, and, and again, getting people, uh, you know, you're mixing I'm up like that. Beetlejuice. <laughs> I'm like Beetlejuice says re- the Rev. <laughs> Don't say it three times. Yeah. It'll, <laughs> It'll pop up in here. It'll pop up and give you a purple nurple. By the way, I am past Harley right now. I have 13. Oh, you no, you were up to like 15, 17, 18. Oh, was I? Oh yeah, you're way past. That. Oh okay, I yeah, wasn't no. watching. Yeah. Um, and then I think Rev uh, scared him away. But, I believe it. That's awesome. But um, so great stuff going on there. Uh, uh, so so who these days, and it doesn't have to be mainstream TV, maybe other people in the indies, or maybe you're looking into the past, like who is uh, influencing you these days? Uh, Roderick Strong. Okay. That's um, where I got master the- Master of the Backbreaker. Yes, that's where I got that gimmick from. Mm-hmm. Uh Omega. Oh, I'm sorry. Messiah of the Backbreaker, I think yes. he's being called these days. Yes. I had I kind of put a little twist on it so we weren't this yeah, yeah. identical, so I wasn't completely ripping him off. Yeah. Um, Kenny Omega, he's always been – that's just because he's the best in the world and everyone <laughs> – whatever. Everyone's following him and seeing what he's doing. Uh, Tony Storm, I've learned that she – knows how to work a crowd mm-hmm. really well. I was new, I, I'm trying to catch up, but doing great things over there in NXT UK. Yes. Uh, her stuff with Shimmer is really good, too. Oh, yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, Rev Ron Hunt has as many syllables. As Beetlejuice, yes. Well, that's when, it, that's when an English major is running our Facebook account. That's what comes up. <laughs> oh, you don't run it. 
Um, well, not cur- take. not currently because I'm conducting this interview. Oh, okay, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Uh. I don't know. I need another question. Yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, anybody else that influences you? Oh, uh, I mean, a lot of old school Shawn Michaels. Okay. I was always told to go back and watch I mean, his... you've basically been watching that from the womb, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, that, that's who I really look to, to really find out how to groove God and wrestling into mm-hmm. the same sense. Mm-hmm. Because his second run... Yeah. It was him really focused on doing it for the Lord and, rather than and himself. I think his best run. Right. I mean, it was I mean, he was he was he was innovating the first run, right? And mm. the second run he just knocked everything out of the park. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, his second run he put on plenty of classic matches mm-hmm. with the likes of everyone. Mhm. New and old. Um yes. so Two years into this, what is the best and the worst about indie wrestling? <laughs> uh, buildings, uh, venues that wrestling is being held in, uh, all the back roads that have tried to destroy my car. We're on the worst. We're on the worst, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, officially. We're on the worst, my bad. <laughs> uh, the venues we've wor- I've worked in, uh, the roads, like I said, mm-hmm. traveling the back roads because you have to avoid them tolls. Yeah. Uh, putting your driving long distances and not getting paid Mm -hmm. and they didn't tell you they weren't going to pay you until you got there. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean the good, the goods is, uh, you get to meet a lot of good people in the business. You really get to like, one of the things I say is I get that platform to really express myself through Jesus and everything, but just the platform to really be like the clown that I am in real life Mm -hmm. to over exaggerate that on the bigger stages in the ring on promos. Sorry. I drink a lot of coffee. (laughs) (laughs) I've been belching the whole time. Uh, just, I mean, the business is great and all, but there's a lot of people that without them, I wouldn't be sitting here. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be on the first Friday night fight nights. Is that what they're calling it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Just checking in on the branding, yes. I wouldn't be ranked number six for the umpteenth week in a row. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Fight Society rankings. uh it's a really cool concept. I like it. Mm-hmm. It makes it feel more sporty. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I'm still ranked six. I believe. I believe it. It was mentioned that everybody above you has been winning. But I've been winning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. Uh, I actually had the wins kind of kind of off too when they asked me about my ranking. And I, I guess I have the third most wins behind uh, Bro, Beastman, and uh, Patrick Hayes. Okay. Because uh, Hayes and Beastman have 16 apiece, and Bro has 14. Mm. I have 13. So technically third position. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But six? Mm. I don't know. But no, I've, uh, I've I, I'm had... no mathematician. But. Yeah, I've had tons of fun with the uh, Ring of Honor guys mm-hmm. that have come through. Uh, Flex Simmons, great guy. Mm-hmm. Douchebag in the ring. Mm-hmm. Like him, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joe, I've learned a lot from Joe Keys. Joe Keys, yeah. Yeah. I understand uh, he has family issues. I saw him having issues with his sister up in Erie. <laughs> oh, I, I haven't seen anything <laughs> about that. Uh, Dak Draper, I've learned a lot from him. Me and him actually still keep in touch. Mm-hmm. Um. It was funny. He uh, told me that anytime he has questions or anything, he message he texts uh, Chris Hero, mm-hmm. and because so, uh, Dak is a former um, um, NXT Performance Center guy yes, too. So yes, so is it you know he's been to you know he's gotten training there too, mm-hmm. and now he's getting Ring of Honor training. So he's been through all. Hopefully, he's soaking up everything. Oh but. yeah. <laughs> That dude is like a sponge, mm-hmm. and then you squeeze him, and it just all flows back out to anyone who has their ears open, and it's great. But uh, 
anytime I have a match or anything, I send it to him and he breaks it down for me. He tells me what I did wrong, mm -hmm. what I need to work on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, different things like that, but it's always good to have that type of, I know he's not technically a veteran yet, but that type of person in your career. Mm hmm. Because, I mean, I still have, like, uh, Quinn and Beastman that I throw my ideas off of. Uh, Chris LaRusso. And I have a question. I throw it off him. Uh, Lee Moriarty has helped me to no end. Mm -hmm. Like, anytime I have a question, anytime I need to work on something, he's always at the uh, battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. Like, just helping me out with it. And he also has some amazing videos of him kind of testing stuff out on his uh, Instagram, too. So I think he may have been a subject of one of those. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you about that, too. <laughs> so he tells me uh, he might yell at me later, but he he told me, all right, we need to make it look like we're in the middle of a match. Mm -hmm. So we start out and whatever, and we go through the same spot about 30 times. Mm hmm. All 30 times, he legitimately kicks my arm <laughs> off of the mat as hard as he can. I went home, and I woke up the next morning, and my arm was swollen. It had red prints. Jeez. You can see his boot on it. It was crazy. He's pretty serious with that. Well, AJ Alexander, thank you so much for joining us here. Of course, Friday Night Fight, Site is, uh, Friday Night Fight Society is going to be uh, uh, starting this week if you are joining us or ev uh, every month as well. Um, and, of course, you're showing up. Uh, uh, you know, We've seen you on Black Diamond with Jesus Club. Uh, is there Are there any other promotions coming up uh, uh, that uh, people need to look out for you? Oh, geez. I'll be at uh, Showtime Championship Wrestling Alliance mm -hmm. on the 20th. Uh, I'll be Fight Society on Friday. Mm -hmm. Uh Next Sunday, 21st, maybe, 22nd, it's Dropkick Diabetes 5. Okay. Uh, that's a great thing. Where do they hold those? Uh, Austin Town, Ohio, okay. I would say. Okay. It's somewhere up near Salem. Um, Route 33 Wrestling I have coming up. That's a good promotion down in deep West Virginia. Apparently easy to find on Route 33. Yes. <laughs> That's yes, a, that's really, clever. Really easy to find. That's actually where me and LaRusso drove down together, and I almost broke the whole front axle of my car because there was a road slide. So <laughs> that was fun. But it's riding with people is great too because you get to hear all their stories and they'll watch your match when you're there and mm -hmm. all the other good stuff that comes out of it. Awesome. Uh, where can people find you online? Oh, geez. Uh, AJ Alexander 03 is all of my social medias. Uh, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Twitter's not so active. Instagram is pretty active. Mm -hmm. uh, Snapchat, and I'm always on there. You can talk to me. I'll add you back. I don't care. Oh, can we get another thing out of the way real quick? Um, Facebook Messenger. Please do not call wrestlers on Facebook Messenger. It is so weird. Okay, can I, can I ask wrestlers not to call me on Facebook Messenger too? Because that's been happening lately. Do they call you? Uh, somebody is, but I think he's drunk. I mean, I'm still <laughs> haven't figured this out. I'm hoping I see him in a future wrestling show because I don't want to give it away uh, uh, to be like, hey, man, do you need something? Because I don't know, and I'm not answering at 5 in the morning. Oh, my gosh. It's just... It's weird. <laughs> Dude, listen, I've had I've had just random people call me. I'm like, listen, I don't know who you are, or we've only talked like once in person. I am not answering the phone. I only answer the phone for my mom, okay? Right, and I have a... Let alone messenger phone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been like real skeptical of like giving my number out. Yeah. Even to wrestlers, but mm. I mean, <laughs> that's probably the weirdest thing I've ever... like. And some, like, once in a great while, I'll answer it just to see what's going on. Yeah. I had a grandfather call me. Yeah, this is the one. This is one of the ones I answered. A grandfather called me and literally cussed me out because I wasn't at the hospital when he had a stroke. Never met the guy in my life. 
he thought you like was a kid or something their his kid or something yeah wow it was it was the other reason not to answer apparently yeah it was so, very and got, strange and of course i got ronnie stars just yelling i like calling sorg now no no ronnie no no um <laughs> Uh, go check him out, uh, and of course, if you want to check out, um, uh, oh yeah, I also have oh, Edge oh. of Your Seat Wrestling August seventeenth. Oh. I'm glad Rick just popped in here and told me because <laughs> it slipped my mind. We just talked about it yesterday. I love, I'm sorry, Rick. I love that everybody's just completely <laughs> doing yeah. this part of the interview uh, uh, for you. So, um, I don't answer for my wife. <laughs> I didn't answer the phone for her today, and she's in California. <laughs> <laughs> So, hey, it's been a busy day. Um, oh, yeah. Anyways, we've been on the text. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, if you want to see AJ in action, of course, all those places you just mentioned. Uh, he's also in action on Black Diamond Wrestling on AndyWrestling.network and over on the uh, Pro Wrestling Network, PWNNetwork.com mm-hmm. for Fight Society, also available on IndyWrestling.us. Go check all that out. And I believe there's a the, – if not, maybe I didn't include you in that tag match, but I know I've put some matches up there uh, with you before over oh, on yeah. YouTube and oh, everything. Yeah, you so go look them up and uh, see what you've been missing one to look out for here in the future he's just getting started folks so thank you so much for joining us thank you everybody's joining us live you have officially beat the crap out of uh uh our, our last guest here this yeah, evening yeah see with, we're at 18 uh, right now mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh so we'll see you guys next time until then please support indie wrestling <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.